It has been said that if you don't see God in the profane and the profound, you're missing half the story. And this is a great truth. God is in the sadness and the laughter, in the bitter and the sweet. There is a divine purpose to everything, and therefore a divine presence in everything. God is the up and the down, the hot and the cold, the left and the right, the reverent and the irreverent. So I tell you, you can speak to me as you would your best friend. Is it your thought that I despise some while I love the others? I tell you, I despise nothing. None of it is repulsive to me. It is life, and life is a gift, the unspeakable treasure, the holy of holies. I am life, for I am the stuff life is. Its every aspect has a divine purpose. Nothing exists without a reason. Understood and approved by God. You cannot create a thing, not a thought, an object, an event, no experience of any kind which is outside of God's plan. For God's plan is for you to create anything, everything, whatever you want. In such freedom lies the experience of God being God. And this is the experience for which I created you and life itself. Evil is that which you call evil. Yet even that I love. For it only through that which you call evil that you can know God. I do not love hot more than cold, high more than low, left more than right, it is all relative. It is all a part of what is. I do not love good more than bad. Everything is acceptable in the sight of God. For how can God not accept that which is? To reject a thing is to deny it exists. To say that it is not okay is to say that it is not a part of me, and that is impossible. Yet hold to your beliefs and stay true to your values. For these are the values of your parents, of your parents' parents, of your friends and of your society. They form the structure of your life, and to lose them would be to unravel the fabric of your existence. Still examine them one by one. Review them piece by piece. Do not dismantle the house, but look at each brick and replace those which appear broken, which no longer support the structure. Your ideas about right and wrong are just that, ideas. They are the thoughts which form the shape and create the substance of who you are. There would be only one reason to change any of these, only one purpose in making an alteration. If you are not happy with who you are. Only you can know if you are happy. Only you can say, this is my creation, in which I am well pleased. If your values serve you, hold to them, argue for them, fight to defend them, yet seek to fight in a way that harms no one. Deity has no needs. All that is is exactly that. All that is. It therefore wants or lacks nothing. By definition, I am without needs. I require nothing. This does not mean I am without desires. Desires and needs are not the same thing. Desire is the beginning of all action. It is first thought. It is a grand feeling in the soul. It is God choosing what next to create. And what is God's desire? I desire first to know and experience myself in all my glory, to know who I am. Before I invented you and all the worlds of the universe, it was impossible for me to do this. Second, I desire that you shall know and experience who you really are through the power I have given you to create and experience yourself in whatever way you choose. Third, I desire for the whole life process to be an experience of constant joy, 
continuous creation, never-ending expansion, and total fulfillment in each moment of now. I have established a perfect system whereby these desires may be realized. They are being realized now in this very moment. The only difference between you and me is that I know this. In this moment of your total knowing, which is a moment that could come upon you at any time, you too will feel as I do always, totally joyful, loving, accepting, blessing, and grateful. These are the five attitudes of God. Joyful, loving, accepting, blessing, and grateful. So yes, hold to your values, so long as you experience that they serve you. Yet look to see whether the values you serve with your thoughts, words, and actions bring you to the space of your experience of the highest and best idea you ever had about you. Examine your values one by one. Hold them up to the light of public scrutiny. If you can tell the world who you are and what you believe without breaking stride or hesitating, you are happy with yourself. You have created a self and a life for the self which needs no improvement. You have reached perfection. I have established laws in the universe that make it possible for you to have, to create, exactly what you choose. These laws cannot be violated, nor can they be ignored. You are following these laws right now, even as you read this. You cannot not follow the law, for these are the way things work. You cannot step aside from this. You cannot operate outside of it. Every minute of your life you have been operating inside of it, and everything you have ever experienced you have thusly created. You are in a partnership with God. We share an eternal covenant. My promise to you is to always give whatever you ask for. Your promise is to ask, to understand the process of the asking and the answering. I have explained this process. I will do so again so that you clearly understand it. You are a three-part being. You consist of body, mind, and spirit. You could also call these the physical, the non-physical, and the metaphysical. This is the Holy Trinity, and it has been called by many names. That which you are, I am. I am manifested as three in one. You have called this the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or consciousness, subconsciousness, superconsciousness, or id, ego, and superego, or energy, matter, and antimatter, or mind, heart, and soul, or body, mind, and spirit, or past, present, and future or there, here, and the space between. These three aspects of you are actually three energies. You might call them thought, word, and action. All three put together produce a result, which in your language and understanding is called a feeling or experience. Your soul is the sum total of every feeling you've ever created. Your awareness of some of these is called your memory. When you have a memory, you are said to remember. That is to put back together, to reassemble the parts. When you reassemble all of the parts of you, you will have remembered who you really are. The process of creation starts with thought, an idea, conception, visualization, Everything you see was once someone's idea. Nothing exists in your world that did not first exist as pure thought. This is true of the universe as well. Thought is the first level of creation. Next comes the word. Everything you say is a thought expressed. It is creative and sends forth creative energy into the universe. 
Words are more dynamic than thoughts because words are at a different level of vibration than thought. They disrupt the universe with greater impact. Words are the second level of creation. Next comes action. Action are words moving. Words are thought expressed. Thoughts are ideas formed. Ideas are energies come together. Energies are forces released. Forces are elements existing. Elements are particles of God, portions of the all, the stuff of everything. The beginning is God, the end is action. Action is God creating, or God experienced. Your thought about yourself is that you are not enough, not wondrous enough, not sinless enough. To be a part of God, in partnership with God, you have denied for so long who you are. You have forgotten who you are. This has not occurred by coincidence. This is not happenstance. It is all part of the divine plan. For you could not create, claim, experience who you are if you already were it. It was necessary first for you to release, deny, forget your connection to me in order to fully experience it by fully creating it, by calling it forth. For your grandest wish and my greatest desire was for you to experience yourself as the part of me you are. You are, therefore, in the process of experiencing yourself by creating yourself anew in every single moment, as am I through you. Do you see the partnership? Do you grasp its implications? It is a holy collaboration, truly a holy communion.